Today I want to take you on a tour of my home automation. If you're interested in learning more about what I use to control and protect my home, then watch the rest of this video. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel for more tech reviews and tutorials. Over the years I experimented with a variety of different smart hubs and different smart home products and wasn't really all that impressed. When I got started originally in home automation, I settled on using Insteon products mainly because they were easy to use and mostly because I could find a device for almost everything I needed to do. One of the things that was most important to me when I got started was to get a system that was scalable and Insteon really allowed me to do that. Very early in the deployment, I purchased a ISY994i controller to replace my Insteon hub, which I wasn't really impressed with, as, a, as the ISY would provide me with a good foundation that I could build on. I did do an overview video of the ISY994, on, and I'll post a link to it in the description. Of course, you can use whatever control you want, whatever works for you. With that said, let's get started with the walkthrough of what I have do a couple quick demos, and talk a little bit about what's planned for the last phase. Because I think this is one of the most important aspects of home automation, the first part I'd like to get started with is to cover leak sensors and water shutoff. As I've been a victim of a couple floods, um, the first thing I do now is to make sure that I have leak sensors at all the water sources. Um, I've also, to support that, implemented an auto shutoff valve in the event something does happen. So I want to kind of walk you through how that all works and hopefully it'll help you. So leak sensors, I've currently deployed about 10 leak sensors to cover kind of every sink, toilet, faucet, or any water source. Um, as my plumbing runs underground, I chose to protect only the exit points for now. The leak detectors are great to notify you if you've, if you've got a leak, but the real benefit is to taking that notification or that signal and actually executing an automatic water shutoff so it kills the water to the entire house. To avoid major water damage, you need the water to go off pretty quickly. And lastly, since um, we are relying on this, or I am relying on this, I want a system um, that kind of self-monitors itself. So if a sensor's going either a malfunction, or battery's low, or anything like that, I, I need to be notified that that needs to be taken care of so that I can keep those things running, make sure that they're always current so if something happens, it will actually do what it's supposed to do. So to give you a better idea of how the sensors work and how the water gets shut off, I'm going to set up a little demo here. So I put a small amount of water into a plate. As you can see, the sensors actually have two small uh, kind of electrodes sticking out of the bottom. And um, when, they when water shorts across those two sensors, it actually trips the valve. So I'm going to go ahead and dip this into this little small plate of water here. And there isn't really much water in here. And you can see real time how long it, ac it takes to actually shut off the water and take some action. As you can see, the water starting to, to slow down and, and eventually just shuts off completely. So there's, a, there's obviously a slight delay. I mean, it takes a few seconds in order to uh, for the water to not only shut off, but also the pressure in the pipes to actually flush out. Um, I've actually installed a total of 10 leak sensors throughout the house. And lastly, I have um, installed a leak sensor Underneath my air conditioning unit, um, the blower section is actually in the house and I've had the condensation pipe plug up or the drain pipe plug up and actually cause water to run out and get underneath and destroy my flooring. So this one's a little different. It doesn't actually shut off the water. It actually shuts off the power to the AC. Um, that way it, it will stop with the water condensation. And I've also I've built a dam around it to contain the water because it takes a, it's not an instantaneous shut off. It takes a while for the condensation to stop. So I've solved the issue in that respect. So before we get into specific rooms and talk about some other things, I want to talk about some general, general use devices. Um, for starters, the temperature. I bought an Insteon temperature or thermostat, I should say. And that really allows me a lot of flexibility in creating custom programs as well as using the app to 
either turn it on or off when I'm away. A lot of times I'll, uh, before I leave for work, I'll turn on the AC or something like that. So it's already nice and cool by the time I get home. So things you can let your imagination take care of. The other really useful item I find is the irrigation. So by tying in the um, irrigation control into my home automation, I can basically take care of that, put that on schedules. As a byproduct of actually installing the irrigation control, I use one of the extra outputs and actually use that to fill my pool. So I can actually enable a time fill as the pool water gets low, I can actually refill it automatically. So um, eventually in the future, I'm going to add actually a, a level sensor. But presently what I do is I wait for it to get to a certain point, activate the the pool fill. It runs for 12 minutes and then shuts off. That way I can get a constant fill on the pool. Additionally, I use a uh, Insteon what they call a 2450 I.O. link, which is kind of a universal device. I'll um, we'll show you a picture of it here. And I use that to um, turn on my landscape lights. Um, in addition, I use another one for actually opening and closing the garage door. So as we move into the dining room, the dining room had some a little bit of a unique challenge. We wanted to put a large mirror in the dining room on a particular wall. And of course, that's the wall with the light switch on it. Once the mirror was mounted, it would actually cover the light switch. So rather than rewire and pull more wires and go through that whole aggravation, because things can change in the future, I decided to put um, a micro switch. You know, as you can see here from the micro switch, these are actually designed to mount behind the wall plate. So you basically pull out the switch, uh, insert the micro switch, put a blank plate on top of it, and then use um, one of any other device to actually control the switch. In my case, I used uh, a mini remote that I mounted on a different wall, which allowed me to control the chandelier light without doing any kind of rewiring at all. Moving on to the hallway, um, the objective here was a little bit different. Because of some issues and stuff that happened during the remodeling when I first bought the house, they accidentally removed the three-way wiring from the hallway and I have a kind of a long L-shaped hallway that comes in from the garage. So having the light switch, which was painfully at the other end of the hallway um, and not be able to turn the lights on when I first get into the, the door was sort of uh, inconvenient and not the safest thing in the world. So what I did is instead of adding more wiring and cost, I used a traditional Insteon switch and I used a remote and by pairing these together I can actually create, I can actually link them so therefore they emulate a three-way switch and I can do that as many times as I want in whatever locations I want. So this became a real convenient way for me to basically simulate three-way lights without having to go through, you know, an expensive adding more cabling and wiring and it actually worked out really well and it gave me a little bit more flexibility because I can actually extend it even further. So I plan to actually add one more remote switch a little later on. So the dining room, the two bedrooms and the family room as well as my office are primarily or strictly just light control. So I've replaced the standard switches with Insteon controllable switches where I can just do basic light controls. Uh, turn things on and off, put things on timers, and then in the office I've added motion sensing. So there's nothing really particular to go over there. So moving on to the kitchen, because I've had floods and actually one of them was actually located from the kitchen, I just took a couple extra steps in the kitchen in addition to adding the leak sensors. Let's first take a look at the flood stop water valve that was uh, installed just prior to me installing the main shutoff. They're available actually in different sizes based on your particular pipe size and application. And what I did is I took, a, it's basically a standalone unit. And what I wanted to do, or what I did, was to actually be able to tie this unit, the output of this unit, into an open close sensor that Insteon provides. How this works is basically if something trips this standalone valve, which has its own water leak detection, um, 
in addition to shutting off that one valve that everything is tied to, it will also send a signal to my ISY and activate the main water shutoff just in case something goes wrong. Again, this is probably a way of an overkill, but once it's triggered, the open and close sensor sends a signal out, the main water shuts off, and you should be good to go. Now, I just want to clarify this isn't necessary. You don't need to have two devices to make this effective, but being that I've already had it installed there, to take advantage of it makes sense rather than just taking it off and you know not using it. Currently I've installed over 46 devices and as you can see from the stack of devices here I still have much more work to do before I have completed at least the basics. Projects like these take not, not only take a long time but you typically purchase them a little at a time because the cost can add up pretty quickly. Um, in terms of priority if I if you don't already have a system, I'd tell you to start with a couple basic light switches or light modules and a controller. But as soon as you're comfortable, I would put the water shut off and leak sensors very high on your list. As for me, I just want to complete the balance of my switches, power plugs, and add more motion sensing for safety and power cons conservation, as well as optimize my voice integration to my Echo, which I will cover in a future video. Lastly. In the future, I'd like to get, uh, I'd like to upgrade my ISY994 to the model that has Z-Wave support to, even, to open up even more possibilities without having to start over and buy all new devices. I can just expand it from there. As you can tell from the tour, much of what I'm doing involves just some key devices such as switches, remotes, micro switches, IO link modules and just a few other selected devices that are kind of repetitive and throughout the home. And a little bit of creativity, you can solve almost any problem or simplify any function. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notification icon so you'll be notified of any future content. If you'd like to know more detail or have any questions about anything you saw today, please feel free to post it in the comments, and I will see you on the next video.